Hello, welcome. Uh, we are going to talk about the Batch Working Group, the CNCF Batch Working Group. Thank you all for coming. Um, it's lovely to talk to so many people about what we're doing here. And uh, to start, I'm Alex. I'm Alex Scammon. I work for G Research. Um, I'm one of the chairs of this batch working group that we're going to talk about. Uh, Hello, uh, this is Klaus from Nvidia, and uh, have uh, several experience about the batch system. And I used to be the SIG chair of Kubernetes and also founder of Volcano. So I'm working with Alex on the CNCF batch working group right now. Yeah. Yeah, and we have another chair who isn't here, but uh, Weiwei, uh, who currently works for Apple, but spent a lot of time working on Unicorn at uh, Cloudera. Um, but it's not just us. Um, it is also a bunch of people uh, who show up for some reason every couple of weeks and we and we chat about batch systems uh people from SCADMD and you can read up there red hat ibm uh huawei ally cloud by dancer so there are lots of people involved in the conversation and uh what we are setting out to do is well we set out to try and align all of these different projects that we'll talk about in a minute uh, to see if there's any commonalities, anything that we can uh, share together and we'll create protocols and standards and, and things that we can all share. And over the course of a year or so, we realized that we need to sort of rein in our expectations and we have been mostly starting on just education and trying to, trying to get a grasp and help other people get a grasp on uh, what all the options are out there right now, because there are lots and we'll, we'll talk about them soon. Eventually, what we'd like to do is broaden the discussion just from batch schedules, which we'll talk to about today, to more of a system view of batch uh, and maybe get back to that lofty goal of aligning everybody. But we'll, we'll see. We'll start small. And uh, as you know, there are also uh, another working group in Kubernetes. Uh, that's I mean uh, Kubernetes batch working group. We have uh, lots of interaction with them, but uh, uh, in CNCF working group, we're focused on the uh, several projects. Uh, not only the CNCF, but also the uh, Apache, such as the Unicorn, and also some uh, not the CNCF projects, such as Slurm. We have uh, we, we are going to provide the solution, provide suggestion across the. Uh, different project. This is a kind of uh, a bit different with the uh, Kubernetes batch working group. But uh, we have lots of connection and uh, we work closely. Yeah, yeah it's very confusing. <laughs> Two groups both called batch working group. One's Kubernetes, one's us. We're all nice. So, um, And there's a question, I, I suppose, about why there's even a discussion about batch scheduling uh, to take place. and. The sort of roots of the conversation are around this uh, sort of traditional view of Kubernetes, which is as like a place where you can run long-lived services, your web server, your, and things that will need to stay up forever and ever. And for people who want to do traditional HPC workloads, it's slightly different. The workloads look different in shape and in duration and in, in how you use your uh, your farm. And when people tried to use Kubernetes to do those things, they ran into all sorts of problems. And it's been a discussion ever since about how to make Kubernetes more amenable to this kind of workload. There's also a discussion around all of the people who have been doing traditional HPC batch for 20, 30 years, and they know their tools, they love their tools, and they hear about this cloud thing and they don't want to deal with it. And should we be bridging those gaps between uh, the traditional old HPC world and where we are in cloud? So those are the, that's the sort of fundamental, uh, fundamentals of this conversation. Um, uh, there's a scheduler. Yeah, um, the, the, the other part of this, as I alluded to earlier, uh, we're going to go through the just schedulers today, but 
actually batch scheduling encompasses a lot of other pieces to make that, that batch workload work. Um, and so th that's part of the as part of the sort of holistic thing that we need to address in Kubernetes to be able to run these workloads. Um, so right now, I'm going to give you an overview of all of the existing cloud options that you have, and you will walk out of here in, in about two minutes understanding deeply all of the architecture. So first, we have Q, there's a controller. Uh, it's, it's just like Kubernetes, you don't have to do much else. Great, that's done. Volcano, we've got a schedule, a volcano schedule, a volcano admission. Uh, we've got jobs, uh, okay, that's fine. Then we've got Unicorn, okay, it's using the, the uh, scheduling framework. Great, brilliant, uh, you, can, you have some shims in there, got it? Awesome. Coordinator, I just heard about this one last week, but I deeply understand all of the infrastructure about it. Uh, Girdle, this one isn't even out yet. This just got added last night. Brilliant pods, I think, get scheduled somewhere. MCAD, what this one doesn't even show, this diagram doesn't even show that this is all about multi-cluster stuff. It gets even more complicated than this. And uh, Run AI, if you don't even want to run your own thing, you can have Run AI run it. Brilliant, genius. Uh, let's go to Armada. This is the one that I'm affiliated with. Again, this is multi-cluster stuff. Look at how simple that is. Brilliant. Genius. LSF, if you're in the traditional world, uh, the, you know, LSF scheduler, they just replaced the Kubernetes scheduler. Hey, presto, you're running it, uh, LSF. Sunk, kind of the same thing. You're going to run Slurm. Brilliant. Genius. Look at that diagram. Everyone gets it, right? <laughs> okay, so we've only got like 20, 25 minutes here. There's no possible way that we're going to give you an in-depth view of how all of these things work. Uh, but there is a lot of similarity between them. There are, um, uh, there are also lots of very subtle differences, which is sort of the, the basis of the, the conversation that we have every two weeks, which is just to sit down and try and puzzle out what works and what doesn't in this uh, ecosystem. So we tried to sort of normalize the views of all of these uh, batch schedulers. We'll start with Q, which is uh, a native batch scheduler to uh, Kubernetes. This is actually being driven out of our sister team, the Kubernetes Batch Working Group, not us, which is the CNCF Batch Working Group, but the Kubernetes Batch Working Group has been driving this project, Q. And it looks that this picture should look very sim familiar to you. This is like bog standard Kubernetes. There's like your control plane, your worker nodes, they talk to each other. Uh, there is a queue controller and it will run your batch workloads. Great. And uh, it, the, the little bento box, the, the sushi up there, that's like, this is your standard bento box thing for batch scheduling. Now we'll move to another one, which Klaus is very familiar with. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, for Volcano, this uh, going to be a, have a long story here. Uh, it's used to be a crew batch here. It's the first, uh, uh, I think, the first batch scheduler in Kubernetes, and then we extend the scope to uh, job controller, device plugin to include everything there. So this is going to be separate from Kubernetes and uh, donate to uh, CNCF. And currently, Volcano is a you know uh, incubator project in CNCF. So uh, in the keynotes, I think you. You see lots of uh, picture about Volcano, and uh, it's uh, we build Volcano based on the experience about the HPC part, and I uh, use it to work at uh, uh, platform computing. I'm not sure how many people know this company, but uh, you know it's a lot have a lot of uh, experience here. And uh, Volcano can are going to re uh, you know build the uh, support the uh, uh, batch feature in Kubernetes and uh, integrate with the. Uh, uh, future of Kubernetes for this one, yeah. And and sort of importantly for this diagram, the the you know going from Q to Volcano, all we're showing here, we're boiling down, we're getting rid of a lot of complexity and just showing that essentially we've just replaced the scheduler with Volcano here. That's really all that we've done. If we go to uh, something like Flux. Oh, another important point there. There's still the job controller. You can still submit jobs just like you can in Q. Uh, you see the job controller down there on the, on the lower left. Uh, when you get to Fluent, they also replace the scheduler. Uh, but you don't uh, 
create through the job controller, so I've removed that. Um, again, just sort of showing how similar these things are at some level, but also very different. Um, this, again, uses the scheduling framework to override the scheduler and, and replace it with uh, Flux. Uh, there's a, a complicated sort of history, a lineage of names here. They've changed it from Flux to Fluence, I believe, because it collides with the uh, Flux CD project. But um, this is yet another one where we just change the scheduler out. Then we go to Run AI, which I think somebody might be here from Run AI. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, Run AI, that's really interesting. I, I think uh, uh, I hear about this project from lots of customer for you know we have a cooperation with with the Run AI. And I think Run AI provide a good interface for the end user and can also you know run manage lots of cluster for the end user. And uh, from my side is that this uh, that's great. Yes, it has a uh, wrong AI have a control line, can control the multiple cluster and provide the uh, results to uh, improve the results utilization for the end user. And uh, you know, for for the multi tenants environment, they also would like to you know manage the cluster and share the results between the different tenants. That's uh, that's great. That's great. And again, another one that just replaces the scheduler, uh, again, through the scheduling framework, Unicorn. Um, there, this one's from Cloudera. I, I don't know if we have anybody from here. Uh, they sometimes send somebody to KubeCon. Um, but this one has some very interesting things around uh, the hierarchy of queues that you can create. For some projects, that's an absolute necessity, just how you can organize your queues that relate to your organization. Um, a lot of these also have very fancy um, ways of doing the schedule. All of these so far are, <clears throat> are interested in priority fairness queues so that you can get fair use out of your, uh, your farm. Um, a lot of these, I could go through each one, but they they have preemption, they have gang scheduling, that all the sort of things that you would f be familiar with coming from a traditional HPC universe. Uh, and a new one, again. Oh, coordinator, yeah, yeah that's interesting. I think there, uh, as there in, the, uh, in the last, uh, in the field, uh, recently there are several requirements that we are going to support online service, in, oh sorry, online workload and offline workload together in a single cluster, right? So web server and the batch workload, such as uh, code transaction, code transfer, image, something like that. So in, uh, we always call that uh, calling, call, uh, collocation, workload collocation, uh, collocation. So because the, the workload has, uh, um, you know, have the time-based resource requirement, for example, as a daytime, they we are going to require the results for web server, and as a night batch workload, for example, that, uh, big data something like that will require more resource. So, coordinator uh, coordinator project try to balance the resource between this kind of workload and also uh, meet the queues requirement of of both workload. This is a you know this is a common requirement for the. Uh, internet company and also some uh, other offline uh, offline workload. Yeah. And so all of these have been sort of focused on uh, single cluster schedulers, and you've seen most of them just sort of change out the scheduler. Some of them have the uh, job API that you can still submit to or not. Um, but the next one is MCAD, and this changes how we look at it somewhat because this is aiming at multi-cluster uh, batch scheduling so that you could batch schedule across a whole bunch of different Kubernetes clusters. And so you'll see that I change the cluster size so that the control plane is just uh, in that control cluster. And then you have target deployment clusters where you can send the jobs out to. Um, this one has an MCAD controller that is, uh, is doing the work. Uh, you 
I think, submit app wrappers. They, they have a, a CRD, a special CRD to, to submit to uh, Kubernetes. Um, this is similar to the next one, which is the one that I'm affiliated with, Armada. And again, this is a multi-cluster kind of an approach. And here, you can see that I moved some other things around where Armada isn't actually submitting to the API or using etcd. Part of the rationale here was that we wanted to avoid overloading etcd or the API server. And so we, we actually distribute, we talk directly to the API, oh, sorry, to the Armada API, and then that distributes it out to the executor clusters that you see here. Um, the next, oh, uh, one little thing on multi-cluster stuff. Q that I mentioned at the beginning has just added multi-Q, which is another approach to doing multi-cluster stuff. Yeah. Okay, RSF, I'm not sure anyone knows RSF. Um, I that's, yeah, that's great. That's great. This is this is traditional, by the way. This, yeah. That's why we switched to nigiri here. It's not no longer a bento box. It's now nigiri. Yeah. So. RSF is uh, you know I, as far as uh, maybe the, the first generation of uh, traditional HPC scheduling system, and uh, for the top five hundred, the top five hundred uh, cluster in the world, uh, several uh, cluster are using RSF as a batch scheduling. So this is a powerful and had a lot of feature. And uh, when we, when a uh, few, few years ago, we provide a kind of uh, solution that to integrate Kubernetes uh, with the RSF. The major purpose of this project is to leverage scheduler capability of RSF to enhance the Kubernetes part. So in this case, we can see that RSF also has the scheduler component and provides a, a scheduler capability for the uh, Kubernetes. And uh, they they also have some agents uh, on the uh, computer node because uh, they need to have uh, report some international, uh, internal data to the scheduler and then the uh, Kubernetes and RSF can work together for them. And so another traditional one, if you're a traditionalist, I mean, this again uh, is for people who are coming from uh, a traditional world wondering how to get engaged. HD Condor is, I've debated about whether to put this on the slides because it has sort of the, the least sort of um, integration directly with Kubernetes. But uh, in talking with the, the community, they, there are plenty of people who do run Condor on Kubernetes. And in general, all they do is they either Helm install a Condor cluster directly into a, a Kubernetes cluster, or they'll have endpoints, EPs running in the uh, in a pod itself, um, and then just having a, an external Condor installation know that those pods exist, know that those EPs exist, and then uh, direct workloads over there. And so it's. This is yet another way that people use Kubernetes to um, to run batch workloads with a traditional scheduler. Yeah, so uh, this is a, a, a name about uh, Serum on Kubernetes. So uh, Serum is also another uh, scheduler, uh, batch scheduler for the uh, traditional HPC. And uh, again, for the Top 500 cluster, I think there are also lots of cluster are using the Slurm as a batch scheduler, and uh, a bit of uh, a bit different with the RSF with Kubernetes. I think Slurm uh, sunk support the feature to launch the Slurm in Kubernetes cluster, and uh, it also provides several feature for the uh, set admin or SRE to manage. The cluster, for example, it provides node scheduling and uh, 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 control plane HA and a several feature uh, by leverage Kubernetes. Because for Kubernetes, it is already support, for example, a recover network manager and uh, story manager, the several feature for the uh, for the Slurm. So for the end user, they can just 
the, what they need is just to submit the workload to the server. That's going to make it easy and for the for the end user and also for the operator. Yeah. Yeah, which is an interesting um, bridge, I think, for the traditionalists out there. When I talk to a lot of people who are firmly entrenched in APC, the default is Slurm, and this might be a way of bringing people across that divide. Um, so we've. I think we've gone through 10 or 11 different schedulers here, and the point of it is, you know, as I started off by saying, we didn't go into the guts of any of this. The point of going through uh, uh, all of these schedulers is that they're actually very similar. They're, they're approaching this either through um, you know, replacing the, the scheduler or having a controller. Sometimes there's a jobs API that you can submit to. Sometimes there isn't. Sometimes there's an agent on the worker node. Sometimes there isn't. The, there's, there are some slight differences from this, this high level. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the things that we're trying to do is help other people know that these things exist. One of the recurring themes that we've seen over the years is that because people didn't know that these things existed, they went out and built new ones. And we're guilty of that. We're both guilty of that. Um, and really, it would be way better if we could pool our resources and not build more ones and try and work on these things together. So, so that's the first thing is just like, hey, these things exist. They're all actually pretty similar, yes, to actually choose one, you're going to have to dive in under the hood and look at all the details. Uh, there was actually a shout out to um, Anish, I think from Red Hat, at the very last talk of, on batch day, uh, AI day. There was a, a good comparison um, that they did of uh, five of these tools that, that gives you a head start into what are the different things that are actually running? What are the, the policies? What are the, the controllers? What, so check that talk out. That goes into one level more depth than we've gone into here for half of these things. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, for the batch working group, and I think it's a good community for, uh, for either for the community and for the end user to provide more feedback about each of the project. And that's going to be a uh, the very important input for the for each project to improve their feature and how you know what's the pain point and for for example what's the high priority of feature and whether we have new you know user case for example for uh, for AI for inference for training for distributed training several things here and we we build this uh, working group to get more feedback for all of the project mm -hmm. and when we have sh to share share some of the things yeah, it's going to be great for everyone. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things that we're working on sharing is this, uh, is adding a landscape um, to the landscapes of landscapes that we have in the CNCF. Um, this isn't out yet, there's a PR discussing how exactly we want to have this look, but again, trying to be a signpost for people who are interested in Batch, don't know where to start, and here is a starting point. There are existing projects that you should know about, please check them out. Um, so that's the, the first thing that we're working on. Um, we also have just some new entrants that we'd like to mention. Yeah, I think there, you know, as I mentioned, there are several uh, new features, uh, new projects here uh, for the coordinator. I think this uh, uh, cover one can so for features that's called location you know, a web server and batch and big data, several things. And uh, I think another interesting topic is about uh, fan ops. Uh, I think a call location is a sub topic about fan ops for them to improve how to save your, uh, reduce the cost, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there are also another uh, project called uh, uh, open cost, that means uh, do more analysis. And for the crime, I think this is more about the Collocation part. And uh, for the others, so for, for example, for the uh, Golder, we have uh, more feature here, and uh, he has uh, also working on the uh, collocation part and also working on the uh, uh, gun scheduling, job level affinity, several features here. Yeah. And, and we do realize the irony in telling you all about 
like four new projects that have, have come in the last year when I've just been saying like, please don't create new ones. It's just that we were too late. Like these were already going, it's fine. They got in under the wire, but no more, okay? <laughs> um, so uh, what's next? As I mentioned, we've got the batch landscape uh, that we're gonna publish. Hopefully people start seeing that there are options out there. Uh, we aspire to write a white paper or a survey that gets very complicated very quickly in even just how we define what a scheduler is. Like normally we just start talking about definitions. It's great, you should join us. Um, and, but thirdly, we want to broaden the discussion, as I said uh, at the beginning, to beyond just batch schedulers, there's a whole bunch of questions about how they work with workflow engines, how you work with underlying storage layers, how you work with all the distributed different training frameworks that you want to, to use. So um, will, will we get information from DRA or the cluster inventory that can inform these, uh, all of these batch schedulers so they can make better choices? All of those things are part of the, the batch system initiative that we are talking about here. Uh, I think for the white paper, I'd like to say that uh, we would like to get more input from the community because uh, uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the important item is about the terminolo terminology. Uh, as you know, for, for different projects or different uh, uh, error, they will each, sometimes they introduce some, some interesting new term terminology and yeah, that's gonna be make end user confused. So I think one of the important thing is that uh, for this white paper, we will do explain what's the job, task, for example, uh, what's the relationship between the task and the pod, something, all these things. We will try to align and do some explain uh, about, uh, about this term. And I know, like, definitions doesn't sound scintillating terribly, but like, we try and make it fun. We try and spice it up. It's fun. Yeah. Um, but it's not just us creating new terms. It's often also the traditional HPC crowd has their own terms, and they run into our cloud terms, and what they call a scheduler isn't what we call a scheduler. It's it's uh, messy. Um, so how to join us? We've been talking about this thing, encouraging, getting you excited about joining our meeting. How you can actually join it, you can either scan this QR code, it'll take you to some notes about um, how to join. Uh, the meeting invite is in this presentation. The PDF will be up um, a little later. It's first and third, um, first and third Mondays. Oof, <laughs> I will have to change that. First and third Mondays of every month at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's also a Slack channel in the Cloud Native Slack that's just hashtag batch working group. You can also reach out to any of the chairs if you have questions, how to get connected. Um, please, please do. Uh, I think that brings us to the end. And if you have questions, we'd love to hear some. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, yeah, um, you talked about the top 500 a bit and like how, you know, a lot of them use Slurm, et cetera. Uh, how do you see the landscape in the future? And do you see like a high percentage of top 500 supercomputers using some of these? Or do you think the performance will stay with just the basic HPC? I don't know, what do you feel? Uh, how do you feel today? Um. <laughs> Um, like the people who use uh, traditional HPC right now, um, research institutions and like all the, the entrenched in HPC, will they, will they move to cloud? Um, I'd say I'm, uh, I don't know, I go back and forth. Two years ago when I went to SC22, I actually had somebody shout at me for mentioning Kubernetes. Uh, at SC23, they seemed more amenable to the word. Uh, so maybe they're thawing. Um, I, th I think if we can uh, pool our resources and come up with a really good answer for, uh, for batch workloads in cloud, it will be a really appealing even to that, cl even to that crowd. Um, I, I think there's also this sort of philosophical difference between 
people who are in cloud and view cloud as like this fungible resource that you can just burst into versus traditional HPC people who are like, I have bought this you know, billion dollar piece of hardware and I need to maximally use it all the time. And that, that changes how you philosophically build a batch scheduler. And so there's, there are those questions to answer. If we can answer them all together, then you know, there's signs that people are, as I say, thawing and would be open to, to, to being able to do both cloud and traditional APC in the same place. Uh, I, uh, some more input is that, uh, uh, as far as I know, there are also some user cases that, uh, uh, for example, for research, they try to launch Slurm cluster very quickly, so they would like to use just a sunk to launch the uh, uh, launch the cluster by the Kubernetes. That's going to be easy. They don't care the uh, scalability. They don't care the stable stability. Several things. And uh, uh, another thing is that uh, when we uh, for the traditional HPC, there are also the case that they when they le leverage AI stack or AI related component scenario, that's going to be considered to uh, you know how to integrate the Kubernetes. So I, I think everyone already know. <laughs> This year's, this year's uh, AI and Kubernetes is yes, going to be everywhere, right? So when we're talking about the uh, cluster HPC, when we have some AI workload, let me consider the AI, uh, sorry, co consider the Kubernetes part. And uh, when try to run a AI workload HPC on the Kubernetes, they will, you know, have the question about which project we are going to use. And uh, several feature do some uh, several project do the similar features such as gun scheduling, fair share, queue, and uh, that's uh, that depends. But there is still some you know some some corner case meet your requirement. Then uh, if you have some more input, we can we can discuss and also you know link link with the uh, owner of the each project so we can have more discussion. Yeah. Thanks for the great overview. I had a question because you were talking about unifying, please know more, <laughs> right? Unifying some of these projects. But then, for example, for me, it was a novelty because I was aware of the Kubernetes work group, batch work group, but not the CNCF. So also there, is there some kind of unified effort or is this really two different scopes or? I, I mean, the, there's two different scopes. We, we all talk and we all like each other and we're all uh, in league. Uh, even though we've made Armada, there's, there are people on my team who have contributed to Q directly, uh, and that's the project that the, the Kubernetes batch working group is is sort of driving and sort of the, the, the main thing for them. So, no, no, we're all friends and working together. Yeah. Oh, oh damn. Hey, so you already mentioned there's quite a lot of bed schedulers and kindly asked not to create more. Um, what I'm interested in is, so need for computation will just grow and we see that pretty much in some places we're at the limits of single Kubernetes cluster. I think Kubernetes multi-cluster, it still might not be late to standardize multi-cluster in Kubernetes. Let's say Armada. Armada has one approach how it solves multi-cluster. Q and MCAD use a, well, almost orthogonal approach how they solve multi-cluster. Also, multi-cluster is being used in a couple of other Kubernetes 6 and they will solve it in some other scenarios, so it's not some other approaches. So what is the stance of the batch working group on multi-cluster? Are there any efforts to st at least standardize that? Because at least for batch scheduling, later it might be easier to merge some batch schedulers into one, at least if they agree on the multi-cluster approach. Because multi-cluster definitely will be the future. <laughs> um, I mean, is there a conversation to standardize? I would say no. Um, I mean, there hasn't been a conversation yet, all, is all. I think you're hinting at what I was uh, referring to earlier about, I think in reference to the, the first question, where there's a philosophical difference between people who have on-prem gear and those who are in the cloud. And, uh, and that informs the choices that you make for, in this case, multi-cluster batch scheduling. Um, 
so you should come and join us, Dayan, and uh, you should drive that conversation. I'd love it. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. One Look, more. Yeah. One more? Okay. So you're telling us, poor engineers, that we cannot create more bad job schedulers. No, uh, no more bad schedulers. Okay. No more, no more schedulers. Uh, are we allowed to do DAG schedulers? Or in other words, is that part of the scope of the batch working group? Uh, of what kind of schedulers, sorry? DAG schedulers. So, DAG schedulers. Yes. Jonathan, no. You're <laughs> not allowed to build any more DAG workflow engines. No, no. Definitely not on WASM. No, don't do any new Rust thing. Don't, no. Uh, was him? Th this, this is, uh, yeah, Jonathan is just trolling me here. He knows that I, I deplore two new creations, new batch schedulers and new workflow engines. I, I, it's my pet peeve. So thank you, Jonathan, queuing that up. Thank you all for, uh, for coming. Really appreciate you. Okay. Please join the conversation. We would love to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.